It is the dawn of the Copper Age, 3200 BC, and you're leading one of the major civilizations in and around the area known as the Fertile Crescent, which is at the core of the area we now call the Middle East. Through strategic card play and disc placement, you'll need to build cities, establish deities, and dominate the sea better than your opponents in ancient civilizations of the Middle East, which was designed by Chris Werder Brugge and Mark McLaughlin, developed by Fred Schachter, and published by GMT Games, who sponsored this video. Hi everyone, my name is Candace Harris from Board Game Geek. We've got some civilizations to develop in this game of not only civilization building, but of civilization survival. So let's get this game down to the table to go a little more in focus on ancient civilizations of the Middle East. Ancient Civilizations of the Middle East is a competitive, abstract civilization game where one to six players guide the renowned and legendary civilizations that rose and fell in and around the area we now call the Middle East. Each player commands one of 17 civilizations, each with its own unique attributes, and your goal is to have more victory points than any other player at the end of the game. Throughout the game, your civilization scores victory points for building cities, establishing and capturing deities, looting opposing cities, and accumulating wealth. Each player civilization has its own civilization display and starts the game with a number of discs on the map in areas they control. Single discs for camps, two stack discs for settlements, and three stack discs for cities. A game of ancient civilizations of the Middle East can last up to four epochs, which are split into two to four turns. On each turn, you'll play through five phases, starting with the growth phase, where you'll gain discs from your supply into the discs for growth area on your civilization display based on your civilization's presence in different areas of the board. Then you'll deploy your newly available discs to the colorful board's fertile, plain, mountain, and sea areas to develop and expand your civilization. During the card phase, players take turns playing a fate card or establishing a deity. There are several different types of fate cards, which have a variety of game effects to help your civilization or hinder your opponent's civilizations. And there are a variety of different deities with special abilities for your civilization. When Barbarian Invasion event cards are drawn, they are controlled by the player with the least number of victory points, which is a cool, interesting balancing mechanism for the game. If you manage to capture an opponent's deity from taking control of their homeland, you can return it to score victory points during this phase as well. During the competition phase, you'll resolve a competition in every contested area on the board that contains a mountain stronghold cube with at least one disc, or two or more discs belonging to a single faction, along with one or more discs belonging to any opposing factions. When resolving a competition in an area, each civilization involved can play any number of competition cards face down, and then you'll simultaneously reveal them to resolve their effects. Of course, as during the card phase, there are also negation cards which can be played to attempt to cancel the effects of competition cards, so you'll need to plan accordingly since you never know exactly which cards rival civilizations may have up their sleeves. After competition cards are resolved, the remaining civilizations involved in the competition lose discs one at a time following a simple diceless procedure, but there's always the option to discard a card or spend money known as Mina in this game to avoid removing one of your discs. The alternating disc removal continues until the condition for competition no longer exists, in most cases because only a single participating civilization or barbarians survive. If you manage to capture an opponent's deity by taking control of their homeland, you can score victory points for its capture. Furthermore, if you eliminate an opposing civilization's stack of three or more discs, then a city has been sacked and the winner receives loot of a victory point and one mina. It can pay to be aggressive in this game, just as during antiquity. Then, in the reckoning phase, each civilization scores one point for each of its cities, for a temple in its homeland, and for each captured temple on its civilization display. Then you'll draw more cards before moving on to the next turn, starting with its growth phase. After the fourth turn, or possibly sooner if there's a successful sudden end of epoch check, there's an end of epoch phase where you'll refresh your hand of cards, resolve an event on the change of epoch table, and you'll have an opportunity to score points for having the most cities, dominating sea areas, and for money in your treasury. The player leading the civilization with the most victory points at the end of the game wins. 
And that's a key aspect of the game. You win by victory points, but it doesn't have to be with the civilization you started with. An ancient civilizations of the Middle East turn has a Gilgamesh step, which allows a player whose civilization is on the ropes to come back into play with a new civilization, having all its power and majesty, which you can use to not only build on your previous score, but also to take revenge upon those who once oppressed you. This is a game you're never out of in a quest for victory. While a full game is played over the course of four epochs, roughly following the early Bronze Age through the Hellenic Age, you can customize your experience and play a game of any length, either to a pre-agreed time on the clock or to a victory point goal. Or you can also play one of the numerous scenarios crafted for all player counts. Even though the basic game system of Ancient Civilizations of the Middle East is very similar to its predecessor and sister game, Ancient Civilizations of the Inner Sea, Ancient Civilizations of the Middle East is its own beast with a lot more homelands and civilizations, more varied terrain types, and it features deities instead of wonders. Ancient Civilizations of the Middle East is an interesting and unique civilization survival game. It doesn't quite feel like a war game, nor does it feel exactly like a civilization building game. It lies somewhere in between, and it even offers optional cultural development tracks for additional strategic options, while providing players a lot of flexibility since you can freely vary the game length with lots of sandbox and historical options for different scenarios and player counts, including solitaire. You can choose to lean into it more as a war game or play it more as a friendly game of trade, exploration, and city building. Either way, it's a relatively straightforward game system to learn and play, and there's plenty of player interaction from the different types of cards you play and how you position yourself on the board. Plus, like many GMT games, there's a booklet included with a wealth of historical background information that explains how the game mechanisms connect to the history being represented. If Ancient Civilizations of the Middle East sounds like a game you'd enjoy, be sure to check out its page on the GMT Games website or Board Game Geek to learn more. I'm Candace Harris from Board Game Geek, and we just went in focus on Ancient Civilizations of the Middle East. Have a great day.